Seeing as rehydrated drops in exactly 11 days, I thought I would remind everyone the true speedrunning capabilities of the original Battle for Bikini Bottom. Even without all the crazy stuff like cruise boosting and sponge gliding, this game has some seriously big sequence breaks, from skipping entire areas to skipping entire levels and completely doing them backwards. The great thing about this is all these awesome exploits are exclusive to this game. Seeing as Rehydrated is being built from the ground up, it's safe to assume all these things I'm showcasing in this video are exclusive only to the original Battle for Bikini Bottom. Without further ado, let's get into some tricks that speedrunners use to make this game what it is. Jellyfish Fields is one of the best opening levels to any game I've played. After talking to Gary, the player is tasked to climb up to the top of Jellyfish Rock and destroy their first Duplicatotron. Players quickly realize that with a precise jump at the vertex of this rock, you can jump onto the Jellyfish statue and essentially skip the entire climb. This was pretty fast, and you even got a sock along the way. Years later, a trick called Hammer Skip was found that allows you to skip even more of the climb and allows for less walking. Speedrunners first have to manipulate the Hammerbot to scale this rock, then stand on the robot's head for just long enough so the game thinks that their last known standing position was the robot's head. Next, jump into the goo and perform a one-frame jump to reach the very top of the hill. Alternatively, the player can just get enough height, then drown in the goo and spawn up top. This is obviously much slower, but it's still faster than the old climb. Unfortunately, with Hammer Skip, speedrunners miss out on a fast sock when climbing the statue, meaning they're going to have to find another one during their run. Which transitions great into Squid's Dream. This area always had me constantly retrying as a kid. In my opinion, this area was the pinnacle of platforming in this game. Seeing as it is the true final complete stage in the game, it is rather fitting. Of course, this level would never be viable in speedruns. I mean, just look at how long it takes. It's the definition of slow. However, using cruise boosting, that sock we missed back in Jellyfish Fields is recovered as meeting a set cycle in Squid's Dream allows the player to collect it while not stopping. Keep in mind that Squid's Dream is a more advanced spatula because of the precise movement needed and the speed warranted to meet the fastest cycle and obtain the sock. Paying clams in this game is, um, lame. They always cost way too much and they really like taking their time. While there isn't a way to fully skip paying this awful clam in rock bottom to achieve, um, a sock, there is a way to skip nearly every other clam in the game. Taking us back to Spongebob's dream, the player can opt to either pay this clam their entire paycheck or perform a scary looking jump off of the slide to get stuck on this block. Funnily enough, the trampolines are still in motion for some reason, even without paying the clam. Other clams, like the one in Goo Lagoon, can be skipped over because of these flags here that have collision. A very odd choice by the developers. Using the flags to climb to the top of the tower, the player has to use the bash to turn themselves around, and then with some tight inputs, are able to barely reach the top of the platform. These bungee spatulas, even when paying the clams, are usually some of the easiest in the game. This one in Sand Mountain is made even easier when having Hans disabled. You can just jump down and get it. Same goes for the one in Dutchman's Graveyard, and I'm seeing a theme here. Remember the ballroom puzzle? Yeah, I never liked it either. Hours of my life as a kid just gone. While I do hope Purple Lamp makes this spatula a little more, um, lenient, I do hope they don't make it baby mode with little cribs and binkies laying around everywhere. My point is, yes, you can skip the spatula. All you have to do is go into the corner, do some precise inputs, and, uh, you're in, just like that. Our next lineup is, uh, oh, another clam. Okay. Uh, well, as most people know, this button you receive after paying this clam as Patrick is always there, meaning this clam is just BSing you the entire time. Speedrunners used to activate it just to Spongebob with the cruise bubble, then hop up and over the sandcastle to reach the other side and collect the spatula. This was a staple in runs until some interesting motivation was given. Fucking early, boys. Now, we didn't have to give the clam any satisfaction of paying him or hitting the stupid button as performing an L-clip over this gate allows you to traverse out of bounds and collect the spatula this way. Moving over to rock bottom, everyone's least favorite level, we have an extremely easy skip that anyone can do. When you first load in, there will be a sleepy time robot near the bathrooms. Climb on top of the restrooms and get hit into the sign. Next, quickly jump on top of the sign, and once the sleepy time hits you again, perform a bash, and if done correctly, you will have made it to the very end of the level. Speedrunners often complete levels backwards in this game. Kelp Force has this leaf jump you can do, and Goo Lagoon has this sponge glide at the beginning of the level. 
Click the I card up top if you want to learn more about that. Finally, I have a relatively new exploit to show you. Everyone knows that the Robot Sandy fight is the worst in the game, and I couldn't agree more. Previously, the only way to skip this fight was to lag clip, but there's since been a way to clip underneath without it. When Sandy performs her elbow attack, activate a bash right after she hits Spongebob, and he should clip right through the floor. Keep in mind this doesn't reward Spongebob with the Bubble Bowl power-up, only the spatula. Thank you for watching. I'm going to try to start pumping out multiple videos a week and start branching out into other games. As always, Battle for Bikini Bottom and Rehydrated videos will be every Friday at 11am Pacific Standard Time and 2pm Eastern Standard Time. That's about it. Peace.